Hello everyone, welcome to Radically Loved Radio. I wanted to create a place where people can go to to get inspired, get motivated, or find some clarity and get tools to create a radically loved life. I will do my best to provide information on a variety of subjects, including yoga, holistic health, life coaching, spirituality, meditation, and overall mindful living. Each episode will bring you some of the world's best spiritual leaders, entrepreneurs, yoga teachers, coaches, along with some of my closest friends, and we will talk about their life experiences and journeys to create something more out of their lives and how they continue to grow to make that happen. Thanks for listening. Going on my very first yoga retreat seven years ago was a major turning point in my life, so much so that now I get to lead these amazing yoga adventures all over the world. These are truly transformative experiences, and I believe that anyone who enjoys a lifestyle of health and wellness can greatly benefit from a yoga retreat. So, this February, I'm taking a very special group with me on a yoga and meditation retreat to Thailand. The retreat is called Love, Gratitude, and Freedom. The retreat is about designing a roadmap to connect to love in your life. We will use different yoga modalities to connect with our sense of purpose, gratitude, and achieve more freedom in our lives. Everyone knows how during our daily lives we get totally bombarded and totally overwhelmed and it's really nice to be able to get away and go somewhere with like-minded individuals, eat really delicious food, and be able to just immerse ourselves in practice. You'll take your yoga to the next level, you'll get a new perspective, you'll be able to have a digital detox, you'll be able to relax and de-stress, and maybe learn something new. If you're interested, go to www.radicallyloved.com forward slash events, read all about the retreats there, or you can email me, rosie at radicallyloved.com for more information. Shannon Algio is a spiritual life coach international yoga teacher and host on the iTunes new and noteworthy Soul Feed podcast. Shannon helps thousands of people all over the world raise their energetic vibration so that they can access divine guidance, co-create with the laws of the universe, and serve the world from a place of unconditional love. And I will tell you, if there's anybody that embodies unconditional love, this is the person. I was so honored and excited to host Shannon in my home in Laurel Canyon over tea to talk about all the things that he loves, the beginnings of his podcast, where his career has taken him, and his recent relocation to Los Angeles. I am so honored to call this wonderful man a friend and a love soul brother. I cannot wait to share this podcast with you all. The number one thing that I want to share with our listeners, number one, is who you are and what you do and your current project. Um, You and Alex Kipp are incredible hosts to an incredible podcast called Soul Feed that uh, facilitates soul seekers and people who are needing soul nourishment Right, And I love that you guys bring real life experiences and you facilitate all kinds of incredible information for people and you have really incredible guests on the show. Um, So for the two people that don't know who you guys are, uh, can you you give the listener uh, a little bit of background of what you do and a little bit about how your podcast got started? Yes, yes. Um, So Alex and I met at the University of Michigan serendipitously when I was, I was actually at Syracuse University visiting a friend and he went, uh, Alex went to Michigan. And we went on like a double date, like me and my friend Max with him and his girlfriend at the time, uh, with Alex and his girlfriend at the time. And then we like didn't really talk again for years. Like it was just this kind of serendipitous like you know, I, I, yeah. I just was meeting a person in college. <laughs> and then we both moved to New York because we studied musical theater. And, uh, but before Alex moved to New York, he was diagnosed with cancer and had like a 15 to 20% chance of survival. And we were, we were Facebook friends at the time. So I remember like sending him a Facebook message and just being like, oh my gosh, like I hope you're well, sending you a lot of good vibes. And, 
And Alex ended up having a, a really like wonderful and somewhat miraculous recovery and moved to New York and was pursuing his career in acting as I was teaching yoga and pursuing like my career in yoga and meditation and, and life coaching. And then Alex saw that I was life coaching and he was kind of interested in that. He had just written this play about his whole experience um, uh, going through treatment. And so he reached out to me and he was like, how are you life coaching? What is life coaching? Can we be accountability partners and figure this out together? And so then in true Alex and Shannon fashion, although there was no Alex and Shannon fashion then, by like our second meeting, we were like, let's like do a podcast. Like, let's like get going. Let's like really like, like align ourselves with amazing people and put a great message out into the world. And so, so we decided we were going to do a podcast and Initially, we didn't know what it was going to be called. We, we th- thought we were going to call it the Soul Workout. <laughs> oh, I love that. A workout for your soul. <laughs> um, and then we settled on on Soul Feed, and and um, one of our first guests was Sean Corn. At, at the time, I had just done the yoga leadership training with Sean, Suzanne, and, and uh, Hala, oh. and who we were just talking about. Yes, one of my teachers, Hala Corey. Yes, and. And I asked Sean if she would come on the podcast, and she said yes, and that, that really set in motion our own idea about what was possible for Soul Feed mm-hmm. and the type of guest we wanted to have on Soul mm-hmm. Feed and the types of conversations that we wanted to be having. So that's, that's sort of the nutshell. Oh, what a great nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great nutshell. No, I really love... Uh, there's so... There's, you know, from yoga and meditation to entrepreneurship to coaching to you know how to feed your own spirituality you know um i think that part of what i love so much that you guys are doing is this uh, idea of uh community you know like you're you guys are very very big on building a community and building your tribe of soul warriors you know and it's it's such a an incredible it just feels so powerful so we all know how important community is right i mean it's definitely something that needs to be cultivated where do you see soul feed helping in the community at large or how do you see the the your soul warriors as as making a difference in the world what's the big vision behind it yeah well you know the the podcast was really born out of this this idea this place of we're all in this together and there's like no such thing as an enlightened spiritual master who doesn't have to face their own humanity from Mm -hmm. time to time (laughs) Mm -hmm. and that was one of the big lessons that we learned interviewing like Marianne Williamson and Deepak Chopra and Gabby Bernstein. And like, is that, Oh, like it was like this breakdown of this idea that I am smaller than them or they're bigger than me or that there's like a kind of hierarchy in this, in this world. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a lot of times when Alex and I record episodes, when it's just one of us talking or the two of us talking together, when we're not even interviewing a guest, it's, it's often my intention to speak to an issue that I'm going through in my own humanity because I, I don't know, I just think like we're, it's not helpful to pretend like we all have it figured out. Yes, you're right. Um, and so that's, so that's kind of like what community means to me is like this, mm-hmm. like we're all in this together mm-hmm. and, and that nobody's better than anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it also taps into that whole accountability that brought you and Alex together in the first place. You know, it's like this idea that we're all seekers together, right? I think it's a slippery slope the minute that somebody says that they have it all figured out or they have the answers to everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Especially now, like where it's a really dangerous place to be when you're looking for answers or if you're looking for one person to to show you what your worth is you know and so i think that part of our responsibility as people who have some platform you know is to be able to give the message that community is important and that our curiosity is important and to be able to ask questions and to to seek out wise teachers and and to get wisdom from the people that are out there like teaching you know teachings from the heart that are 
uh, pure of heart. You know, one thing that Yoga Rupa Rod Stryker, my teacher, as you know, um, says is uh, a guru is the the bringer of light. That's what guru means, mm. right? So uh, a good teacher is someone who is pure of heart. You know, someone who whose energy is is pure, whose intention is is pure and whose intention is coming from a place of love. Uh, and I say that because I, I really feel that what you're doing in the world is, is that, you know, I think one of the first times we hung out, right. We, we were at Wanderlust and we were having, uh, food, food. Were we having food? Probably. I, I think so. I we try were. and always have food yeah. when I'm there. <laughs> we were sitting there and I just remember looking at you and, and just saying, you know, thank you for the work that you're doing in the world because it is so honest and so authentic and so sincere. And I think that it, where we are now in the landscape of our culture, uh, socioeconomic, um, just in general in the world, I think it's so important to, to have people be those leaders, you know, mm. be those teachers. Um, yeah. And, and I just want to reflect that back to you too, because you, stop. yeah, you, I mean, you're doing that as well. And, and there's just one thing I want to say about that is like, we, we are a celebrity obsessed culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want the power to be in Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump or Beyonce or, or someone who is greater than us, you know? And I think, I think that having leaders, like wise ones, gurus, bringers of light is a beautiful thing because we need our teachers to inspire us and, sh and light the way and show the way. But the, the whole idea of like, of soul feed and of any like true spiritual path is to remind, remind us that the power is in us, the light is in us. Mm -hmm. And so, I don't know, I just hope that all these conversations that we're having guide people to their own sense of, of guru light yeah. and that we take a look at when we're giving our power away to, to a leader or a teacher who, who we think has all the answers. Yeah. Well, and so talking about teachers in your life and your experience, who have been some of the biggest teachers in your life? Oh, <laughs> I love this question. I love this question so much. It's like permission to talk about people who I love. I mean, uh, Sean Korn. Sean Korn, like when I, when I took her class a few years ago at Wanderlust Stratton in Vermont, uh, that, that was a game changer for me. It, it was like a true moment of, of it, my, whole, my whole body, mind, and spirit system was shaken up in her class because I grew up, I grew up in prayer. I went to Catholic school for 10 years and like prayer was this like beautiful silent time where you got to like put your hands together and close your eyes and bring your chin to your chest and talk to a power greater than yourself. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of, you know, different ideas about Catholicism out there and mm -hmm. But like prayer was just a gift that I was given. Yeah. And then I, I fell away from that, you know, like I experienced maybe prayer in different ways, like performing on the stage and singing and dancing. And, um, and then I, when I started teaching yoga, I felt this sort of connection, this union, this reintegration of my body, mind and spirit. But it wasn't until I landed in Sean's class where I realized what teachers of yoga could can say and do and be for people. And her like just untethered willingness to pray over people's bodies in, in mass in these like classes, <laughs> I was like, oh shit, you can do that? <laughs> and it just reset my mind about what it means to be a yoga teacher and what what power we have as as teachers. And so Sean for sure, Pema Chodron. Uh, her teachings, especially about like groundlessness and who we are when the when the ground is out from underneath mm -hmm. us, uh, and being comfortable in, in the discomfort, and also uh, speaking of normalizing discomfort, Brene Brown. Um, I left my corporate job that I was at for two and a half years with an amazing company, Lululemon. It's like hardly a corporate job, but <laughs> but a job with a corporation um, because of her book, Daring Greatly, and that inspired me to really like lean into the vulnerability of going out, quote unquote, on my own and starting my business. 
Um, so I'd say like those three, I'll just wow. leave it at that for I now. Mean, those are pretty powerful <laughs> teachers. You know, you talk about Brene Brown and actually, you know, we're, I was telling you the story of when Tori and I moved to, to Portland and I remember driving, I'd never lived anywhere else, you know, for, for the people that don't know, I was born and raised in Los Angeles my entire life. And about almost four years ago, I'd moved up to Portland, um, to just try something new, you know, as, as a couple, we had decided, you know, that we just wanted change, you know, and him more than me. And hopefully he doesn't hear this because I'm always like, it's both. It was equal. It was him. Um, <laughs> and, he, it may, he might edit this. Yeah, he might edit this <laughs> and so, um, it was really, really, truly, a, a scary experience for me. And I, and I remember, you know, uh, my car was packed up, everything. He was driving a big moving truck. He had taken off uh, before me, and I was the last one to leave the house here in L.A. And I got in my car with my little shih tzu right next to me, Chewy. And, you know, I, I had uh, Daring Greatly on my audio, as an audiobook. And it's an eight-hour audiobook in case you... <laughs> I mean, that book is intense, right? But, like, this audiobook is... It's like research. Yeah, so... <laughs> I'm driving up to Oregon from LA, listening to Darren Greatly, crying my eyes, like just tears, like streaming down my face. And it's raining and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to do this. Like, this is, this is going to happen. This is happening right now. This is going to happen. It's going to be okay. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to dare. You know, it's like, it was this whole, like really incredible experience. So I can just, I can relate to Brene Brown being one of those, like, you know, really intense, powerful leaders and, and teachers, you know? Yeah. And it's such, it's such a great perspective on spirituality. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if she would call it necessarily spirituality, although part of her research talks about having a connection to a, yeah. a greater power mm -hmm. than yourself. Yeah. But, um, but it just having the research and the data and all of that qualitative research and all of those case studies that she's done on so many people, it's just really cool to have that information delivered in a research context. Mm, interesting. And if you need that kind of like convincing, yeah, it's there for you. It is. <laughs> it totally is in a very well researched, well thought out, articulate way. Um, I want to go back and just talk about uh, your transition from job to becoming a yoga teacher. Can you tell us what happened, what your thought process was? So many people that, you know, feedback that I've uh, received from this podcast and just in general is like people that want to be yoga teachers. And as a yoga teacher trainer, uh, you know, I, I, this is something that I hear all the time, you know, people that have a corporate job or that, you know, want a, another career or that are thinking about just deepening their practice. Like how, how did you make that decision? What was happening in your life and what was the process to becoming a yoga teacher? Mm, such a good question. Question. You know, I, I had such an interesting beginning to my yoga path because yoga like saved the broken dancer in me. Cause I, I had just like, I had danced so much in college and, and I, when I started dancing as a freshman in high school, well, I started dancing before that, but I got good at, as a freshman in high school, I found my like flow. What kind of dance? Um, I love like jazz, mm -hmm. like jazz, modern fusion. And I also loved to like tap dance and musical theater styles and so cool. Yeah. And, and it's like, it's in, in college, I, lost the joy because it was all about how it looked to the audience and being on your mark at the right at time. And it just like, it lost the expression and the freedom. It, it just like, I got too much confinement and too much structure. And so when I landed on a yoga mat in New York city, I was like, wait, my eyes are closed. I'm focusing on my breath. I'm moving. There's no audience. And I'm just doing this like for me, moving my body for me. And it was like the greatest gift I had received in such a long time. It was like exactly what I needed. And even though I was like fresh out of college and poor and had no idea what I wanted to do with my life, this practice made me feel like a million bucks. <laughs> so alive, so like in my power. And so um, I knew that I was like called to yoga. Cause in, and yoga was having a powerful impact on me. And then I got a job at a yoga studio on the Upper West Side, 
pure yoga, shout out to pure. <laughs> and, um, and then this little woman came in, this little Amer uh, Indian, Indian woman. She's American, but she's uh, from India. Her family's oh, okay. from India. And her name's Rupa, and she's the founder of Nalini Method, which is like a fusion class of like bar and Pilates and yoga and strength training. And she and I, I, I like read her book because all the members of Pure got a copy of her book. And I read it and it like just really, really resonated with me. And then she and I went, ended up connecting and she invited me to do like her first ever teacher training and to help her like manage her, her like studio operation through Pure. And so I became an Alini Method teacher. And I taught like the, I taught those classes for two years and I learned so much about like injuries and strength training and core training and how to like modify for people who have like emotional issues or physical injuries or whatever they're working through. And, but I, but I was teaching this very structured methodical class. And again, I felt confined and I felt like I was just kind of saying what I was, you know, told oh, to yeah. say. And, and I'm so grateful for that experience because it built my confidence as a teacher, mm -hmm. but I wanted to do that yoga movement again. And I was practicing yoga on my own. And so because the Nalini training was at Pure, it incorporated a, like a yoga training. It was a 200 RYT yoga training. Mm -hmm. So I started taking advanced trainings to add on to like my yoga awareness and practice. And I just loved working with private clients because I loved like, I loved that personal attention and being able to look at what someone's going through emotionally, energetically, physically, like any injuries that they're having and cater an experience and a, and a routine for them based on what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And so that's really how I got my start was like teaching a ton of group classes in fitness and then really going into teaching a lot of private yoga. Wow. That's, 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 I mean, that's such a, an incredible way to be able to transition into, you know, like a whole new career, really. I mean, to be able to not be confined by a structure, really. I mean, yoga is the connection between, you know, mind, body and spirit, you know? So how could you confine that? Right. Right. <laughs> I think that's so interesting. Um, w one of the questions that I, I did want to talk to you about, um, especially during the holiday season now, I wanted to ask your opinion on a couple of things. Uh, one, since you do have this breadth of knowledge and you're a coach, you're a teacher, um, one of the questions that I get quite often during this time what advice can you give listeners out there who are feeling stuck during the holiday season? Mm, such a good question. I came, I came upon this quote the other day. I don't know who said it, and I feel like maybe several different teachers have said it, but it popped up on my Instagram, and it popped up at the perfect time for me, and it was, your faith has got to be stronger than your fear. And so I think, like, that's... That's something to remember, like if you're feeling like down or depressed or kind of looking at your year and you're like, oh my God, there's still more I want to do or December's slow, you know, it's like, it's slow in terms of, it's a short month because there's like a whole, at least one week that's like the holidays and then, um, and so it's kind of like trusting that, that there's a new year on the horizon and with the new year comes new possibilities. It's 2017. And so, so I, that's something that I've been practicing is just faith and trust that this is like one month, this is one week, this is one day. And after December comes January. Like, so enjoy this time now as best you can because there's, there's a new year on, on the way. And then another like practical thing is is when I'm in the vibration of scarcity, it can be really helpful to practice gratitude. And the way that I have been enjoying doing that recently is I'll look at like two pages of a journal and then on the, like, on the left page, I'll write everything I'm grateful for now um, and why and I'll be specific and I'll just kind of get into that vibration of everything that I do have because 
it's a privilege. Mm -hmm. There's so many privileges that we have, but we, you know, there's that quote, what we're taking for granted, someone else is praying for. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. I know. It's like, oof. And, yeah. and so, so we, to, so taking the time to recognize the, the abundance that does exist is really important. And then on that other page, on the right hand page, you can write everything that you, that, that you're excited to be grateful for. Oh. So everything that you like are manifesting. And there's something that happens in the brain when you write those things like right next to each other in the same little writing journaling session, because your brain doesn't really know the difference between what's happening now or later or what you have or now versus what you had a week ago. Like, so, so it's really powerful to practice. Like, I'm so grateful for this podcast with Rosie Aww. Yeah. <laughs> and then say like, I'm so grateful for all of the connections and things that Rosie and I are going to create together yes. this next year, you know? So it's like both. It's, yeah. Yeah. And, and that just gets your brain into abundance. Yeah. You talked about earlier, uh, when you were in college, uh, you talked about, uh, being broke and maybe being in a place of scarcity. So another thing that is, is a big thing for, for people, um, especially that, that feeling, right? So, um, how are you able to pull out of that scarcity mindset and come into more of an abundant place in your life? Yeah. Oh gosh. It's not, it's not easy when you're in it. Mm. Cause when you're in, when you're in scarcity, you're really like convinced that, that there's a lack and, and there's a feeling of emptiness and, and so, you know, like, I think there's this idea that, that a lot of people have reminded me of, a lot of, like, great teachers have reminded me of that, like, we don't want to be passing, we don't want to be practicing spiritual bypass where we're just, like, ignoring an issue that's existing within, in us. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to, like, feel how you're feeling and, like, explore what is the root of this scarcity, like, what, why, why am I feeling scarce if it's, like, a recurring pattern? And then, and then like also, what do I want and where am I going and what am I moving towards? You know, A, a Course in Miracles says that, that the bills will be paid on your behalf when you're doing the work of God, which is the work of good. And so there is that like faith and trust element that like you, we set the tone for our lives. You know, it's easy to feel abundant when... I have a new coaching client or, you know, like I get an opportunity that I was hoping to get, or I feel great because, you know, things are going really well, but, but the practice of abundance needs to happen regardless of what's happening in the external. And I think, you know, now more than ever with just what's happening in our political landscape and the divisiveness, no matter like which side you're on, just the divisiveness that exists, like we need to be practicing um, abundance and gratitude and a reminder that solutions are possible and we're in this for the long game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we are. I mean, that's, that's well said. Uh, it's really important to be able to really, uh, step into that frequency, you know, just like you were talking about energetically, like to, you know, you're, you cannot create momentum when you're in inertia like if you're in a down state and you continue to create thoughts and feelings of that negative state you're not gonna move from that negative state like you know you have to be able to even believe and to really have the faith i mean i think that that's such a huge thing and and i think that you you guys do a really great job about you know with with talking to uh, your guests or just on your own you know uh, about that and how important it is to really feed that part of your soul and to really have that sort of ritual so now for you what sort of what's what are the rituals in your life that you have now and how have you found that all of the tools that you've learned in the last year have helped you, uh, when you're having a hard time? Mm, mm. Well, one thing is, you know, one, one of my relationships that's the most challenging and the most rewarding is the one with my boyfriend. Oh. 
because that's the most intimate. That's the most, you know, real and raw and every day. <laughs> and so one thing I've been practicing with him that's really helpful is, is saying to myself this mantra, like, I bow to you, my greatest teacher. Because a lot of times when I fight him, I, I want to, like, teach him a lesson and like <laughs> right or wrong and you know like how did you treat me like that you know and like I'm gonna show you and then that's me attacking right and blaming and giving my power away and I lose energy I lose power when I do that so my new mantra is I bow to you my greatest teacher and I put my hands together and I'll literally bow to him <laughs> um, and it's fun too and he appreciates that you know it changes the dynamic it's very yeah. different than attacking someone absolutely yeah I mean it's such a different feel when you're coming from a place when you're being mindful in your responses and in your reaction right it as opposed to you know lashing out or just kind of saying things that you don't mean um it's it's more of a way of acting wisely right yes. and just being more present Yes. And, and, it, and it's, you know, if I'm having, a, if I'm experiencing a trigger or there's like a tumultuousness happening in me, if I attack and blame him, then like, it's just, it, it drags the whole thing out. The, the, then the cleanup, there's more of a cleanup, there's more of a mess, more of a cleanup. The length of time to recover takes a little bit longer. So like learning to, learning to like, recognize what is this tumult in me? Mm -hmm. This is not his problem. He's not having a problem right now. I am. And that's like a whole nother level of personal responsibility in relationships. And you can apply it to your, you can apply it to your intimate relationship. Thank you. And, or you can apply it to, to like a career or a, if you're frustrated at a job at a job. Oh yeah. Well, that's actually, I, I would love for you to speak a little bit more to that because we have those tumultuous, relationships in our, you know, at our job or with relationships with our family or, you know, with a loved one, like, I think it's so important to be able to recognize that in the other, you know, so how, how do you, how do we begin to create a mindful space in our relationships with the people closest to us? Yeah. Well, first of all, I just want to say like yoga and meditation especially through this transition moving to Los Angeles, I've really realized like the power of them because when you, when you, when the ground is out from underneath you, then, then that is the opportunity to recognize like who you really are. <laughs> and yoga allows you to release physical tension that's collected in your body. You know, like whether that's a big kind of fight with someone or just like a trauma <laughs> while you're driving or, wa or walking on your commute, you know, we collect tension and, and yoga like unwinds us. And so, and then meditation is this process of non-reaction because I'm really good at doing and reacting and responding and answering <laughs> questions. Like I love this, but what's it like to not follow every single train of thought that enters my brain and become a neurotic mess? So like... I say those first two things just as a means to self-regulate mm -hmm. and practice being, being, you know, filling up your well, filling up your, your um, vessel so yeah. that what overflows is what you can give to your family and your friends and your, and your work. And then I think the other, the other piece of it is really, um, you know, if we want to be the change that we seek, then if, if you don't like your boss, then, then uh, you know, making your boss wrong all of the time isn't going to be the answer because it's really like what's missing from a relationship is what I'm not bringing to the relationship. Mm. So like what I'm, what I'm not getting and, and I'm fixated on not getting from someone, I'm not giving to them. And that's like... I mean, it's, it's so hard to, to actually like <laughs> apply that, yeah. but if you can start to give what you want to get, then that's the law of reciprocity. That's the law of attraction. That's the law of karma. There's like all these laws that say the yeah. same thing. So yeah. start giving, start being the solution to the problem. Mm -hmm. And then that's where the miracle happens. But you'll have to let go of your ego saying, no, but the other person's wrong.
Right. <laughs> Which is really challenging. You know, for some people, it's really hard to be able to let go of the control, right? Because we're so control hungry, you know, we're just constantly wanting to be right, you know? Mm, so I think totally. that, I think mm. what you're saying is, is totally on point. Uh, I want to talk about your... <laughs> I'm having so much fun with you. <laughs> 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 hopefully we don't like we could totally spend hours and hours just ow sitting here on my couch. <laughs> I'm trying not to break things i just hit my elbow on oh my are table. you okay yeah it's fine rosie's so excited she's like i know boom, i'm just boom, boom. Like, moving and flailing everywhere um i want to talk to you about your recent transition to los angeles yes. uh i know how hard it is to number one, just move anywhere. It doesn't matter where you're, you're moving down the street or like right next door. Moving is so much work. And, um, especially moving across country, which you did, you came from New York and you, you now are on the other coast, <laughs> east to west, right? East to west. East uh -huh. to west. And, um, I know that just, this is a, a really huge change for, for anyone. Um, so tell us what, was the impetus behind the the desire to move or to to create change and how has your transition been in the last i don't know it's been a month two months two months now two just months. a little over two months yeah i know i know time is flying um yeah that is a great question and i'm i'm living the answer right now um <laughs> And yeah, so the, the impetus of the move was I had lived in New York for seven years, um, plus college, 11 years. And, and I felt like I had, I felt like New York had given me so much. And I was in this flow in New York that was just like, it was kind of like everything I ever wanted and I couldn't see what was next. I, I, and I knew, I knew what was next. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I would have these feelings every once in a while where I would just be like, Shannon, you're not meant to live here. Wow. And, and I would be like, uh, don't listen to that. That's real. That's an inconvenient truth. Well, like, can I just, so what, how was this voice? Was it like a small voice? Would it like, just, I always so curious as to when we get these messages, right? It's like, it, was it a small voice that would just kind of pop in and you'd kind of be like, Oh, whatever, like not a, whatever. But, or was it like something really like viscerally strong where you felt? It was like, it was like, if you're going to acknowledge your wisdom, your wisdom knows that you need peace. And if you are going to experience peace, you need to move out of the city. Oh, so that kind of voice. <laughs> and the first time I, yeah, <laughs> the, the first time I, I heard that, I was like, I, I, you know, you know, like, I was like, well, maybe that's just a like fear-based thought. And maybe I need right. like, of course you can be at peace in New York city. Sure. I, I like, there are people listening to this podcast who live in New York city. I, yeah. it's, I, I've experienced being at peace in New York city. I love New York city. And I just felt this call to experience life in a different and new way. Mm. And, and I was having trouble experiencing New York in a different way. Like it was just like, my, that was my life there. My life was, was my life. And I, and I so wanted to be like, well, who are you really, Shannon? Like, who are you if you move across the country? Who are you if you experience something new and you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation? Like, like what's possible if you give yourself a little bit more time, a little bit more space, mm -hmm. and really, like, lean into this life that you want to create for yourself. And so like within two weeks of me being here, Alex and I met in LA cause he's, he's based in San Diego and we had like all these epiphanies about our business and uh -huh. like our vision started to come to life and all these like connections are happening and mm -hmm. I met you mm -hmm. and now I'm like here in this living room in Laurel Canyon <laughs> and I've like developed a really strong connection with Elena that's gone mm -hmm. to a whole nother level and I've been like learning things that I just didn't have the time and space to learn about in New York. Yeah. Um, so it's just like, it's like 
leaning into this next phase for me felt like I had to come west. <laughs> Let's talk about how much we love Elena Brower just for a minute because she's an incredible human being. Yes, uh, we've had her on, on the show, obviously, and we plan to have more of her. But, I mean, talk about uh, intense, beautiful, authentic, generous, kind graceful human being that just so happens to be a yoga teacher <laughs> you know i mean she's just so incredible and she is really the the person that brought you and i together so i'm i'm going to be eternally grateful to her for that and for mm -hmm. many other things that she knows i'm sure um so how how did you guys meet you and elena I, and by the way, I totally should have mentioned her as one of, of the teachers who've had... Who, she gets a special segment. She gets a special segment. <laughs> I, we were saving it for this segment because El Elena and I met... How did I meet Elena? I took her class at Katona. I had been hearing about her for years. Katona Yoga in Chelsea in New York City. Uh, she was, slash, I think she still is teaching a weekly class there. And... Uh, I had been hearing about Elena for years and years and years, and I finally just like landed in her class. I don't even remember why. I think my, actually, I think my friend Giselle, who's a yoga teacher in Scottsdale, Arizona, now um, she and I, she was like, "Come with Elena, to Elena's class with me," and I took her class. And afterwards, she was like, "Ah, oh, sorry, I'm not sleeping well. I'm having night sweats. I'm sober." And she shared that with me after yeah. class, and I was like, "Whoa, that's really cool that this like." really awesome person who I respect is being like so down and human with me. Uh -huh. um, and then she was like, you need to go to Burning Man. I'm feeling it. Like you'd need to go there. And I like still haven't. So I guess I should do that. Um, <laughs> it will go together next year. I've never been either. Done. <laughs> Listeners, <laughs> Listeners next come year. get radically loved with us at Burning Man 2017. <laughs> um, and... So that's how I met Elena. And then I just kept going back to her class. And yeah. I like started reaching out to her and was like, can you come on my podcast? Come on my podcast, please. And she was like, yes. And we did it. And then we did another one a year later. Um, and then she you know, became a mentor of mine yeah. with doTERRA. And I just like, she inspires me. After our first interview, she said, give me your address. I need to send you a book. And Sounds True had sent her a copy of Pema Chodron's book, mm -hmm. Fail, Fail Again, Fail uh -huh. Better. Uh -huh. um, and she mailed it to me like that day. And I was like, this woman, first of all, like, you didn't need to mail me a book after you generously gave your time to let me interview, on my, interview you on my podcast. Mm -hmm. But like, she just is a special soul. Yeah, she <laughs> is. Why do you think people have a hard time being honest with themselves? Oh, I, I think like it's inconvenient, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to acknowledge the truth, the truth might mean a shift in the external manifestation of your life and our, the way that we're sometimes built or conditioned is to stay comfortable mm. and to keep things as they are and where we we resist change because with change, you know, there's that beautiful Joni Mitchell quote, something's lost, but something's gained in living every day. Mm. And we, you know, we're all about like growth and increasing quarterly sales and economy growth and all these like linear kind of like growth things. But we, life is a cycle, like the earth is spinning and we're spinning around a sun and you know, like, like there is that like life and death and that like birth and death. And, and I think we are, it's scary to let go of the way that our minds have perceived that, you know, our, our identities to be. And we, and we, a lot of us form our identities based on our car or our home or our relationship or our job. And so I think, I think we're all afraid to be really honest because we're afraid to make a mess. We're afraid to shake things up. But I think the, the payoff of being honest is it's like, it's like when you wake up in the morning and you feel really refreshed or you mm -hmm. step outside and the air is cool. 
and you know it's like a new day, like you get to experience that feeling of newness when you let go of the bullshit. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, and, and not even the bullshit, but just that kind of like attachment to identity. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm by no means a pro at this, but I think, I think I know how it works because I'm really bad at it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think that, that, you know, part of the reason why it's, it's such a big question or, or I find myself curious about it is because I, I see it happen so much, you know, and I, I experience it so much, you know, it's like, because we're always trying to be someone for someone else. Someone, you know what I mean? Like we're always trying to like, there's always, you know, uh, you are different things to different people, right? That sort of, um, how do you, that role, right? Or that, you know, transference, mm. right? Where it's like, you're perceived, you know, as a yoga teacher, Shannon, you're supposed to be like happy and excited and like, you know, have dreams of unicorns and like butterflies fluttering around you when you walk, you know, like this is just like... My life is a Snapchat <laughs> Yeah, <filter. laughs> yeah totally. <laughs> and so like, but it's just, it's, that's not reality, right? And obviously listening to you speak and your story and your relationships, your transition, your partnership with, with Alex and your projects, like you are a real human. <laughs> As, as most mostly everyone is, you know, Confirmed so human. <laughs> right. So I think that maybe sort of that idea of like we have to be perfect or we have to do things that are safe, you know, is is something that I I really am a strong advocate of breaking down those ideals, you know, like the that that fake sort of like lie that we've told ourselves that we can't be who we are yes you know yes and that's that's um that's why i moved here was like to experience like who am i in different circumstances mm -hmm. who am i when not everything is so easy for me like it had become in new york you know like mm -hmm. who am i when i let go of the identity that i was attached to as a new yorker hustling yeah. doing it making it happen yeah. you know and uh, so I, I recently I just went and I, I journaled my like seven commandments. I needed to like, I needed some like commandments. I needed oh, some like rules. <laughs> okay. And one of them was to like respect Armand, my boyfriend, unconditionally. And another was, was a commitment to newness. And that means like meeting new people trying new things, taking a dance class of a dance style. Like I went to this videography class the other week where we did like hip hop. Um, because like, I want to be resilient. Mm. I want to be able to like be resilient, you know, and I, you can't be resilient when you're in your comfort zone all the time. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. What area in your life do you feel the most free? Dead silence. Yeah. Probably in the silence, Maybe, honestly. Maybe, yeah. Um, I, I, the thoughts that came to my mind were meditation and yoga. Mm. Like the, when I'm in those practices, I'm touching on like the best parts of me, the truest parts of me, and the parts of me that aren't afraid to like breathe and be with myself. Oh. It's like so good. <laughs> <sighs> that should be printed on a shirt. Um, <laughs> Buy it now in <laughs> wallpaper. <laughs> okay, so just, just a, a final question for you before we, we wrap up and set our date for the next one that we're going to do together. Um, part of Radically Loved is, you know, this idea that we are loved, right? We are radically loved by universe source, our environment, our family, our tribe, you know, our people at our yoga studio, people at your church or people, you know, at your AA meeting or wh wherever you find your tribe, you know, um, we are all humans born with potential beyond any limitation that we may put on ourselves, right? So we are radically loved by source, mm. right? So 
two things. How do you feel radically loved? And what do you radically love? Hmm. Well, I feel radically loved right now being with you, honestly. You're such a loving energy. And, and just hearing you talk about like what it means to that we are radically loved as like a bold statement like made me feel loved (laughs) so loved so like I don't know if I'm feeling that I imagine someone listening is feeling that too and so thank you for just setting that intention um and yeah like as you were talking I was like oh my god like love is love is who we are and like we are radically loved And yet, like at some point along our journeys, we began to doubt that unconditional love because of because of a parent being busy or maybe abusive or a relationship or a letdown. And then over time, we start to believe more in the opposite of love than than love. And so I just was realizing as you were talking that that we are radically loved and that there is this abundance of love that we can receive. Um, and so, I don't know, I just feel right now like I'm receiving love from you and, and I am grateful for the love that you, you emit. Um, and yeah, and that, that's like available to all of us. Like people are trying to love us and we're stopping them. Mm -hmm. So like, let's let it in. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. Yeah, let's, let's let it in people. That's great. And what do you radically love? I radically love you. <laughs> I, just, I do. I do. No, I know you do. I know that. Um, and yeah, I, I I love this opportunity to get to have this conversation with the intention of both of us being our highest selves and talking about what we believe is possible for ourselves and for the world. And I love the opportunity for people to connect with this message and start to like strengthen this sense of conviction and belief within themselves and then have, have this conversation with, with someone in your life if you're listening, you know, like an idea is stronger when it's shared. Mm. That's what Marianne Williamson says. I think it's from A Course in Miracles. And so I love like this and us and everyone listening. I think it's just so cool. Mm, I know, me too. I radically love that too. I do. <laughs> I'm going to ask myself that question and answer it just like that. Yes. Um, so for people listening, Shannon, first of all, I want to thank you so much for, as I said earlier, everything that you're doing, everything that Alex is doing, what you guys have created together and everything that you're creating on your own and just the energy that you emit your authenticity your sincerity and your full presence i appreciate it and i'm grateful for it and i'm grateful for you and uh thank you for taking the time to be here and to come over and to hang out and to have tea and to hang out the dogs oh <laughs> to just be here um where can people get more information Yes. Well, if you search Soul Feed on iTunes, it's all one word, Soul Feed. You can listen to some episodes of Soul Feed podcast. Um, You can go to shannonalgeo.com, S-H-A-N-N-O-N-A-L-G-E-O. You can look out for Soul Feed TV, which is our next venture. Um, Our thoughts are this is Netflix for mind, body, and spirit. And that's going to be available starting February 6th. <gasps> February 6th. <gasps> um, and yeah, be in touch. Yeah, that's so, that's so exciting. And uh, for those of you listening, all, the, uh, all of those links, uh, along with all of Shannon's social media links, will be on the show notes. So you'll be able to uh, see those at www.radicallyloved.com dot com forward slash podcasts um so yeah that's it thanks so much (laughs) everyone thanks for listening shannon thank you i love you you're the best hey everyone thanks for listening for more information visit www.radicallyloved.com forward slash podcast to read all about today's guests or past guests, you can click on any of the links or for more information, you can always follow me on 
Instagram at Rosie Acosta or Twitter at Rosie Acosta. And let us know what you thought.